Hi, this is Tim from Cairo Up, and I wanted to go over a quick refresher of the degenerative cascade of a disc as described by Kirkaldi Willis. It answers the question of how do we go from a disc that looks like this to a disc that looks like this, that's now a dried out, degenerated, dysfunctional, and potentially painful. First, a quick refresher of the disc. This is a young porcine disc. The nucleus is well hydrated and viscous. It's almost like epoxy, and that functions much like a bucket of water in the center of the disc. That bucket of water is a perfect mechanical tool because it's non-compressible, it doesn't wear out, but it does dry out. That disc nucleus begins in a well-hydrated state, but like all tissues, it loses fluid over time. And that's where degeneration starts. When the disc loses fluid, now repetitive microtrauma leads to small circumferential annular tears in the disc, and these may initially not be painful. If they involve the outer fibers of the annulus, it's going to be uncomfortable because that's innervated. But the inside of the annulus and the nucleus is not innervated, it's not vascularized, so those are often silent. Either way, those annular tears lead to weakening of that disc, and that allows for diffuse circumferential bulging of the disc, where now the material starts to come back into the central canal and the lateral recess. If these tears coalesce, they can form channels, and since this material in the middle is like water, that water will find its way out, much like water finding a hole in a dam, whether that be an erosion channel on the top of the disc, the bottom, or most likely circ circumnavigating through the disc, and when that happens, now we have a disc herniation. If there's not a disc herniation, that repetitive microtrauma will, can, will lead to separation of this annulus from the vertebral end plate. Well, that unfortunately compromises the nutrition because nu the nutrients are passed through those trampoline-like vertebral end plates into the disc. So now when there's a loss of nutrition, we start to see degeneration from cumulative stressors and no nourishment. In fact, the average disc loses about 1% of its height per year. That reduces the disc's ability to absorb shock and now disproportionately loads the facet joints so we can start to see some degeneration of those facet joints. And that ultimately translates into instability. Because of the lumbar lordosis, this vertebra wants to shift forward, and the body's attempting to stop that by laying down additional bone in the form of marginal osteophytes, as well as the degenerative process in the facet. But unfortunately, those lead to either central canal or lateral recess stenosis over time. So hopefully this quick uh, illustrated uh, tutorial helps you understand how patients translate from a, a healthy disc to a degenerated disc. If you'd like more information about disc degeneration, visit the protocol in CairoUp.com. Thanks for watching.